So if you guys weren't aware, there's apparently a gambling battle royale movie out there. A bunch of broke dudes get together to play Uno or something in other dangerous games so that they could win the big jackpot. So basically, this is Squid Game before Squid Game, which is fine with me because I was starting to get withdrawal symptoms waiting for season two. Oh yeah? What kind of symptoms? My body gets all twisted, I do handstands, it's not pretty! So I was browsing the interweb one lonely night and managed to catch wind of this movie titled Kaiji, The Ultimate Gambler. I thought, hey, that'd be a good late night watch to unwind after surviving the horrors of having a full-time work schedule and engaging in public society. We live in a society. I took one look at the box art for this movie and, well, do you see what I see? It's a freaking Yu-Gi-Oh card. This dude is holding my very childhood in his hands right now, so how could I not watch this movie? Then I realized it wasn't actually a Yu-Gi-Oh card, it was actually some sort of bootleg Lord of the Rings card with Smeagol on the front cover. So now, I don't even know who the target audience for this movie is. I mean, nobody watches Lord of the Rings except for no-lifers who wear plastic rim glasses. You know, the exact opposite of me. The lead actor, Tatsuya Fujiwara- F Fujiwara- Fujiwara- Pin his name on the screen. This actor is pretty familiar to me. When he's not doing one of his 50,000 stage plays, then he's starring as a mass murderer in the Death Note movies or guest appearing as a baby daddy in the Yakuza games. So this guy can seemingly cross the media multiverse at will. Eat your heart out, Doctor Strange. So hey, card games and Tatsuya. How can you go wrong with this movie? Well, it actually turns out you can go plenty wrong with this movie. I mean, you only need to take one look at the director, Toya Sato's previous work, to see just how insane he is. Feast your eyes, he directed Gotcha Man. The fake ass Power Ranger. Oh god, I knew I should have grabbed some apple pie moonshine before starting this video. I read about this movie's plot from AsianWiki.com because they seem pretty credible. You know, with this being an Asian movie and all. It says, Kaiji Ito moves to Japan after graduating from high school. Unable to find a job and frustrated with society at large, Kaiji spends his days gambling, vandalizing cars, and drinking booze. Alright, it looks like we're starting this one off the right way with a perfect role model of a main character. Two years later, and his life is no better. A debt collector named Endo arrives to collect money, then offers two choices to Kaiji. Spend 10 years paying off your loan, or board a gambling boat for one night to repay your debt, and possibly make a whole lot more. Okay, yeah, I'm starting to see the parallels between this and Squid Game now. Because you remember that the homeboy in that show got slapped up by the game recruiter before making the choice to enter the contest. God damn! So, I think that's enough about spoiling too much. Let me walk you through this marvelous specimen of absolute ridiculousness. The movie starts with what I would assume to be Ellen Musk's first Twitter executive meeting. They discuss what true power is, and the chick who actually says money gets hit with a whammy. You see, the real answer was using money to build a fallout shelter. Y using money to build a fallout shelter. Look, I don't know dude, this is the director Toya Sato's world here, and I'm just trying to make sense of it. But this was so randomly specific. We go from simple topics like money and power, and then like any boss fight in a Dark Souls game, something completely random and unexpected just comes out of nowhere. I mean, a Fallout shelter? Really? Like, do these dudes actually own a Fallout-style nuclear bomb and plan to detonate that freaking thing or what? Or are we just speculating here? I mean, don't tease me if you don't have the real thing. So we finally meet the homeboy Kaiji, and he is in fact gambling. It's almost like the title prepared us for this moment. He has terrible luck with gambling, gets called creepy by girls, and throws absolute temper tantrums. I'm pretty sure that the toddlers from Rugrats are more composed than this fully grown man. I mean, dude was legit staring down a chick with her man right there, but Kaiji wants to get mad when people call him out for it. Wait, the description says that he can't find a job. What is this? I know working at a convenience store is pretty minimum wage, but it's still a job for goodness sake. Anyway, Kaiji fumes about the whole getting called a creep thing and starts kicking people's cars and screaming to himself. You know, all reasonable things a rational human being would do. 
That is until the karma police show up and tell Kaiji that he has to pay them back all the debt that he got himself into. You see, apparently Kaiji got into bed with a bunch of loan sharks and co-signed the loan with some other person that they never name. Or rather, I can't read Japanese kanji, so I can't even tell if the other person's name is on the contract or not. I mean, hell, this could be a Chuck E. Cheese brochure for all I know. But anyway, the guy disappeared and now it's up to Kaiji to pay back all the borrowed money, plus interest, and trust that these dudes added in the fee for him kicking their car in. Like, who even kicks a car without checking to see if anyone is inside first? Wait, who even kicks random cars in a parking lot in the first place? I can't believe I'm normalizing this. So the loan sharks tell Kaiji that there's a gambling game going on in this boat. If he wins, he'll get more than enough money to pay them back. Easy. Because, you know, the best people to listen to for financial advice are the people you already owe an extreme amount of money to. I can already see how this dude Kaiji got into the situation he's in now. He's the most gullible, unstable, unluckiest, stubborn... One hour later. Irresponsible, borderline schizophrenic. Hey, here we are. We're at the gambling boat, and Kaiji is surrounded by other poor, unfortunate fools like him. No, I mean poor literally. These dudes look like they came straight off the homeless assembly line. And Jesus Christ, what the hell is that? Is that Weevil? Does wearing plastic rim glasses really make a dude look like that? Nah, I think I wear to fit way better than he does. W what's that? You guys think that I look like the guy from the Chocolate Rain video? Chocolate Rain. The event begins, and it's a card game. The rules go as follows. H hold up, let me get my Yu-Gi-Oh voice together. <clears throat> Contestants get a couple game cards and golden stars to pin on their chest like it's kindergarten. Every card is a mysterious hand sign, like a pair of scissors, paper, rock, and each has a weakness. Wait a damn minute, this is rock, paper, scissors. Anyway, you know the rules. And if you win, you take one of the other guy's stars for yourself, which is good because you need at least three stars by the end of the time limit to win the game. You lose all your stars and you get sent to the Shadow Realm. Kiwamin is screaming. So the contestants get to battling and ripping off stars. I mean, these guys are mad disrespectful with it too. Some dude named Funai comes up to Kaiji with some elaborate scheme to cheat the system. Funai says that they should coordinate their cards so that they can keep hitting draws. Like, hey, I'll play rock and you play rock. I'll play paper and you play paper, so on and so forth until they run out of cards so they can finish the game and still keep all their stars. I mean, it's not a bad plan and there's apparently no real rule against cheating anyway. But that won't stop people from giving them the stink eye. And since we're talking about faces, they got my boy Kaiji making the surprise Pikachu face when he realizes that Fanai was playing him from the very beginning. Dude got Kaiji into a rhythm like he was salsa dancing, and then played the opposite card like his name was General Akbar. It's a trap. So now Fanai has got two of Kaiji's stars. My man got demoted from a three-star general to a single-star private. Now, a normal person would have taken the L and walked away. Fool me once, fool me twice. But this is Kaiji we're talking about here. Okay, this is the guy who was kicking cars out there in the parking lot like 10 minutes ago. This man kicked everybody's car except for the car of the chick who actually called him a creep in the first place. Alright, Kaiji is not a normal person. So he goes full God of War mode on Fanai, drawing first blood like his name is Rambo. A speck of blood lands on Kaiji's last card, and Funai notices this. And Kaiji notices Funai noticing the blood on the card. And I notice Kaiji noticing Funai noticing the blood on the card. Kind of a notice inception going on here, huh? I don't know when this movie turned into the next season of Dexter, but here we are, in Toyosato land. Okay, you're liable to have your brain slip out of your ears trying to rationalize half the things going on in this movie. Remember, this man directed Crazy Ass Gotcha Man. A actually, hold up, this movie kinda looks fire. I don't know if that's my dwindling sanity speaking or what, but... Anyway, what Kaiji does next is trade cards with another poor unfortunate soul, plants blood onto his new card, and wants to smoke in a rematch with Funai. And again, Funai knows Kaiji's last card has blood on it, and assumes that it's the same as that card as when they were coordinating draws together. But I puts all his stars on the line because he knows he's got this one in the bag. Or at least he thinks he does. 
Remember, Kaiji swapped his card with another homie. So they battle it out, and this time it's Funai with the surprise Pikachu face as all his stars are taken from him. Kiwamon is screaming. Alright, so if you were confused at any point about what the literal I was just describing, don't worry. It's taking every ounce of will in the very fiber of my being not to convulse into a seizure explaining all of this. Kaiji and the other homie he swapped cards with celebrate this big brain victory moment. And just when they thought they hit home base, the other homie realizes that he had one card left in his handkerchief. What? Why is his last card in his hand? You know, I'm done questioning things in this movie. Commence ominous screaming. Well hey, sucks for him, right? But Kaiji is indeed home free, so he most definitely collects his money, clears his debt, and this absolutely marks the end of the movie, right? Kaiji actually forfeits all of his winnings and joins the losers in the Shadow Realm as you call it. What? Yes, Kaiji felt sorry for the other guy and would have felt guilty if he left him. The complete stranger he didn't even know existed until five minutes ago? That's correct, sir. I'm done, no. I'm done. I don't even know what the hell y'all got me watching. This isn't Kaiji the Ultimate Gambler. This is Kaiji the Ultimate Dumbass, alright? I'm not coming back. Sir, if you leave, then you'll have to write a whole new script and start all over again. I ended up coming back. I took some much needed time to reflect on things and found that I should finish this video before I end up in a straitjacket. So, where were we? <clears throat> the ultimate dumbass loses on purpose for a complete stranger, right? Yeah, yeah, this is where we were. They brand Kaiji on his shoulder. I guess that's what all the ominous screaming from before was all about. And force him to work in the Underground Railroad for a while to pay up his debt. And honestly, this is kind of an upgrade for Kaiji. I mean, the workers get steady pay with Monopoly dollars, zero cost living conditions, though highly questionable and wouldn't pass any state inspection, and they get all the greasy ass fried chicken and beer that they can digest. See, this is definitely an upgrade compared to his old boring job that pays with real money and air you don't have to breathe through a filter. Okay, okay, still not convinced. Alright, how about this? Kaiji's been such a good worker that they treat him and some of his other co-workers with a visit to a top shelf skyscraper hotel. Look, they even gave him the bird's eye view and all. That's pretty nice of them, I wish my job would sponsor these kinds of trips. I mean, they even get a big ass cash advance. So as part of the next game, the contestants have but one simple rule, and that's to cross the crane bridge thing. Without falling into oblivion, in the middle of a storm, on an electrified beam. Great joy. What the fu and it's pretty unintentionally funny. I almost forgot how pissed I was at Kaiji for forfeiting the card game. Almost. But these dudes flailing their arms around and salsa dancing on the beam is funny as hell. And to make things worse, apparently this entire event is being broadcasted to a live audience like this is Ninja Warrior or something. Because, you know, rich people never have anything better to do than watch people struggle for their lives while they eat expensive food and drink alcohol. I mean, I can barely stomach watching Animal Planet when I'm so much as downing a bowl of cereal. But look at the Rockefellers here with the iron stomachs. One by one, the contestants fall until there are three left. Kaiji, other homie he swapped cards with before, and the third will that they met in the underground. Other homie apparently has like a cramp or something in his leg and can't go on. He tells Kaiji that he has a daughter back at home and wants Kaiji to take his cash ticket to give to her. I don't see why though, it's not like he's gonna fall or anything. Uh, oh, he fell. Commence ominous screaming. Check it out. Everybody told me yesterday got the microphone and cut. Kaiji and Third Will make it to the end, but Kaiji's spider senses start to go off, prompting him to tell Third Will not to open the window to the next building. I don't know, he has like a feeling or something, so Kaiji's now clairvoyant, like, that's so Raven. Anyway, surely Third Will will heed Kaiji's warning. Surely he'll stop and listen to what Kaiji has to say. Well, I have a one thing to say here. Kiwamon is screaming. Ah! 
Yo, that's the scream from the MTV dub of Volcano High. Dude, that movie is gold! A whole Korean movie dubbed over by urban black celebrities in the most wonderfully cringe way imaginable. What is your purpose? Yeah! I just wanna stay in school! Bro, it's got Snoop Dogg, Method Man, Little John. Yeah! Don't go without me! Man, I gotta cover that movie one day, but uh, <clears throat> back to Kaiji. So after all the salsa dancing finished, Kaiji is the only one left. Dudes in Matrix suits tell Kaiji that he has to play one more game, and if he wins then hey, he can go and cash in all those Willy Wonka golden tickets. Cool, because I felt like I've watched three movies in one at this point. I don't know how they got away with stretching this movie out to damn near Godfather and Harry Potter links, but they did it. I mean, up to this point, I've been expediting the story, and oh joy, we're at another card game. Roll out the Yu-Gi-Oh voice. Each player gets five cards consisting of citizens, a king, a slave, and each has a weakness- uh, Oh, damn it, it's rock, paper, scissors all over again. Kaiji plays a few hands with Japanese Neo, and Kaiji being a complete noob at the game, gets totally steamrolled. Worst part is that he put money up for that battle, so he's broke now. Well, broker, I guess. God damn, what was that? Dang, this old man's a real one, isn't he? Being unentertained by this last battle, the old man, king of the loan sharks, loans Kaiji more money for a rematch. I mean, I can see why people keep loaning Kaiji money, he definitely comes across as an economic and financial guru that is the utmost pillar of responsibility. Anyway, he loses the rematch, surprise surprise, but I think he also lost a few years off his lifespan too because Japanese Agent Smith treats him to a front row view of his seductively moist tongue. I, I totally could have gone the rest of my life without seeing that. I mean, I was fine not even knowing that this guy had a tongue. But there's something odd about him. I mean, aside from the whole tongue thing, he never even looks at Kaiji the whole time they're playing. He just looks down. At his watch? Why his watch? Very sus. Kaiji's taken to the back, about to be shipped off to the underground to work off his record-breaking debt. I mean, wasn't this guy looking for work according to the description anyway? I mean, just because it's back-breaking manual labor that pays pennies doesn't mean that it's not a job, for goodness sake. At the last second, the chick who suggested to him to even start this ridiculously insane gambling journey in the first place agrees to yet again throw more money at Kaiji. You know, I understand that Kaiji is crazy enough to keep accepting loans from people, but at some point, it's gotta be apparent to the loaners that he has absolutely no way to pay any of this money back to them. Suspecting that Japan's knockoff Reservoir Dog is cheating and monitoring him from the brand they put on his shoulder? Yeah, you heard that right. Somehow, his shoulder brand is able to detect Kaiji's heart rate. Yada yada, microchips, yada yada. At this point, I feel confident enough to just explain away all the crazy stuff that happens in this movie just by saying Toyasato. With his newly loaned money, Kaiji rematches Japanese James Bond. Kaiji completely goes off the rocker popping his head against glass to throw his heart rate off so he can't be monitored. Uh, uh yeah, Toyosato. This draws blood, blood lands on the cards, Japanese Will Smith at the Oscars notices said blood, and Kaiji notices Japanese John Wick noticing said blood. Deja vu. Kaiji ends up beating him, and Japanese Agent K from Men in Black gets a spanking. Like, literally, a full-grown adult male gets a spanking. Yes, that's another Toyosato for you. I don't know, somehow this is even more disturbing than the whole tongue thing, honestly. But hey, Kaiji's loaded with the dollar signs now. I mean yen. That's Japanese currency, right? Finally, all the ridiculousness and insanity I had to suffer through has at least been for something. Hey, I gotta admit that I'm pretty happy for Kaiji right now. I mean, he's usually stupid, but maybe I've been too harsh on Kaiji. You know, I thought for sure that trusting that loan shark would have come back to bite him in the butt, but things seem to be going pretty good for him right now. Well, oops, spoke too soon. 
Don't you just hate it when the loan shark who conned you into debt in the first place backstabs you when you trust her by spiking your beer with sleeping pills? That's the worst. She steals damn near all of his money. And with what little money that Kaiji has left, he gives to the card swapper's daughter. And Kaiji ends this movie just as broke as he was when he started the movie. Dramatic walk away. Credits. Wow. Uh, hey. Apart from the very fabric of my mental stability being in the red zone right now, I kinda enjoyed this movie. Anyway, I'll get to working on some more crazy ass movies for you guys, and I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll catch you next time. This is that guy. Laugh and subscribe.